Stephanie Laska. I lost 140 pounds and created Dirty Lazy Keto. Thanks for joining me here on the YouTube channel. Be sure to subscribe and enjoy the show. what I have here. We are going to be talking today about how to make peanut butter, keto, chocolate chip, cookie dough. Did I get your attention with that one? You can see it right here. Now, it may not be this giant of a size that we come up with today, but it certainly is going to taste delicious. I promise you, this is going to be so much fun. I'm going to teach you how to make keto peanut butter cookie dough. And if you're a fan, please give this topic a thumbs up. If you are a cookie monster like me, just me. I even wore this blue shirt because I felt like it looked like the cookie monster. Do you remember that as a child? That was my favorite stuffed animal. I know I'm dating myself from the 70s, but I love, love, love cookies. I rarely actually made the cookies. I would just eat the cookie dough. Anyone else? <laughs> Tell me in the comments if I'm not alone on that one because that's embarrassing. I just threw that out there. But in today's episode, folks, I'm going to take, this is going to be a short one, so I'm going to only take about 10 minutes of your time and I'm going to teach you how to make keto peanut butter cookie dough. So these little balls of deliciousness, I'm going to hold them up here so you can see what they're going to look like. They're not quite as big as that stuffed animal thing, <laughs> but these are going to be delicious. This is just two of them. It's going to make a lot more than this, but somebody ate them before the podcast started. I don't know who it was. <laughs> so I only had two left to show you. I thought that was funny, um, but they're so good. You guys, you're going to be thanking me later. So let's take 10 minutes and just learn how to knock out this quick recipe. Are you excited? You should be. You're probably wondering why too. <laughs> That's because I ate them all. <laughs> but it's actually going to make a nice little platter to, um, for your deliciousness. So let me teach you guys how to do this. Um, so first of all, let's go over the equipment that you're going to need. All right, just a few things. Just a handful of things you're going to need. A bowl, small little bowl, a spoon. You will need, oh no, I just spilled the chocolate chips can't do that. I might have to eat those. <laughs> You're going to need a, a spatula and I'll reach over so I don't knock anything else over. And you're going to need a piece of parchment paper. Sound good? So if you have all those ingredients, feel free to get them out or you can wait till after we're done here. And then in terms of ingredients, this is what you're going to need. You will be needing today some of this fantastic peanut butter. It's a powdered peanut butter. Now, I bought this on Amazon, and it was like 10 bucks for this giant, huge powder. I'm going to open it up and smell it. Oh, hello, beautiful. Now, don't feel like you're wasting your money, because this stuff is amazing. I use it to make salad dressings. I use it in some of the recipes in the Dirty Lazy Keto cookbooks. One of my favorite recipes is the Thai Crunch Salad, which is similar to the one at, um, I always say it wrong, but Panera, Panera Bread. Have you ever had their Thai Crunch Salad? It has like 8 zillion carbs. But I make it myself, and I teach you how in one of the cookbooks. And the dressing is with this stuff right here. And you can make smoothies and all sorts of other fun things. So it's worth your investment. It's called PB Fit Peanut Butter Powder. It is organic, um, and it's super tasty. So this is one of the ingredients that you're going to need. I'll set that aside. Another thing that you are going to need for this recipe is one of these containers of Faye yogurt. And I use the 5% milk fat, Faye. Faye, I love saying that. And it's a small personalized container. And I'm gonna look at the number here. It's 5.3 ounces. It's like a dollar 25 ish at your grocery store. Just a small one, not the big one, just the little personal size. You are gonna need some sugar free sweetener of your choice. Now, whether you steal six of these packets from your local Starbucks or a restaurant, or you have them on hand, six packets of your type of sweetener, whatever the one you like. Don't worry about what people say. Don't be judgy. Use the sweetener you like or that you happen to have on hand. And then last but not least, you are going to need your choice of sugar-free chocolate chips. Your choice. Now, I'm going to pause right there and ask you, do you have a favorite sugar-free chocolate chip? <laughs> this is a very important topic that we could almost talk about all afternoon. But if you have a favorite brand, can you put it in the comments, please? Or a style? Put it in the comments and please say why, because I think that helps others learn and get some ideas. Now, I'm holding up here a package of Chalk Zero baking chips. 
they're called. These are sugar-free milk chocolate style um, dark chocolate. No sugar added mini chips, I think they're called officially. But they're by Chalk Zero. And Chalk Zero is so awesome. They helped sponsor my latest book launch, Extra Easy Keto. And they provided prizes. And we've been doing co-promotes. And they're just so amazing. And they love Dirty Lazy Keto readers and fans. And they're always happy to provide me with some samples to help to create some new recipes for you. And I recommend them by brand in all of my books. So check them out. Um, now, are you going to try this at home? Let me know in the comments if you're excited about this, because I will be choosing a winner to get a prize. So let me spin the wheel real quick while everybody's typing their tips about chocolate chips. Here comes the big wheel. I'll be picking somebody live during the show if you're here live, and I'll also be picking somebody later, like in a week, a month, two months. So you, no matter when you watch this, you might get picked as a winner. So keep commenting no matter when it is you're watching this. Oh, and the winner today gets you pick. So you pick the prize, people. What are you interested in winning? Huh, you're like, well, I don't know. Well, if you've watched one of the shows before, you know I have all sorts of fun tchotchkes. I've got like the Dirty Lazy Keto Lunch Pail. I've got the red pot holder for baking and cooking. And then of course, there's things like, oh, I'm reaching down here. Um, like the Dirty Lazy Keto food magnet, maybe you want one of those, or maybe you want one of the books, because there are eight of them. So if there's something that you would like to win, put it in the comments below, and I might pick you. There's eight books to choose from, and all sorts of fun prizes, keto stickers, etc. So let's move on, guys. I promised you these wonderful cookie dough bites, and I really want to eat these last two. So let's wrap this up. So the directions are for you to make these outstanding, delicious, out of this world, keto peanut butter cookie dough bites are so easy. Here's my demonstration. Get your small bowl. Next, you're gonna get that yogurt that we talked about. Open it up. This is the Faye personal sized yogurt. Throw that in the bowl, spoon it out. You're not gonna throw it. I'm spooning it out into the bowl here. I don't have my gloves on, I know, so I'm just gonna get mad. So I got it in my bowl here. Now, next I'm gonna be adding one third cup of this peanut butter powder that we talked about earlier. One third cup. One third cup, dump that in. Next, you're gonna add six packets of sugar-free sweetener of your choice, six packets. Depending on what brand or style packets, they range. Sometimes they're a gram, sometimes they're a gram and a half, but just six of them. Now. If that's too much, you can do five. If it's not sweet enough, you can do seven. <laughs> you do you. I personally like a, a sweet cookie. So I added both my peanut butter powder, I added my sugar-free sweetener, I added my yogurt to the bowl. Next, I'm just gonna stir it up. Stir it up so it's nice and blended well. Blended well, blended well. This is gonna get exciting at this part. I feel like there should be a drum roll right now. Like, dun, da, 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 like Star Wars. This is very exciting, people. When you, you know, start off on a ketogenic diet, a lot of people crave cookies. They crave chocolate and peanut butter cups. You know, you end up shopping on Amazon or at the store, and you buy things like Reese's Zero Sugar Peanut Butter Cups. You know, and they taste so good, you end up eating them all, right? Not the recommended serving size of, like, one piece. You end up eating them all, and then all that sugar, alcohol does scary things to your intestinal system, right? Everybody's done there. All of a sudden they get a stomach ache or a headache or um, stomach cramps or some kind of issue. And then they're like, dang it, that was not fair. So that is the beauty of this recipe is it doesn't necessarily have all of those potential side effects. Plus it's available, right? These are simple ingredients that you could have on home, at home, in your fridge, in your pantry. So whenever that craving hits, you're not driving to the store. You just go in your kitchen, grab, like what? What was that, three things so far? We have the yogurt, the peanut butter powder, and some sweetener. So simple, and it's coming together so fast, like literally seconds. Now I'm stirring it really well. Really well, and I'm talking, and I'm stirring. So again, it's affordable, it's available, it's everyday ingredients. You're not having to buy anything weird off Amazon or special candy or wait for any shipments to arrive. But most important about this recipe, you guys, 
at least in my opinion, besides taste, come on, let's be real. One of the most important things is the portion control. I'm only making the small little bowl of cookie dough, just a small little bowl. And as you're gonna see, you can't really overeat a small little recipe like this. So I love recipes like, um, I have a wonderful mug cake recipe I can link up after this. A chocolate mug cake where you just make it in the microwave and you have a little chocolate cake in the microwave. And it's just for you, just for one person. I love recipes like that where you can't overdo it. Don't you think? Because I, I like to overdo it. <laughs> I do nothing small in life. I do everything big, everything huge, everything over the top. I know. That's how I am. That's my personality. And I love it. Okay, so after that is blended fabulously and smooth, all those ingredients are nice and smooth together, the last thing you're gonna do is add in your sugar-free chocolate chips. Now I think this recipe is perfect with about a tablespoon. If you want a little more, you can add a little more. If you want a little less, add a little less. But you always add in your chocolate chips at the end and you just kind of fold them in. Oh, hello, beautiful. I'm gonna hold this up so you can see. Tell me that does not look like official cookie dough. Tell me. It looks legit, doesn't it? Come on. Are you serious? Look at that. Looks just like chocolate chip cookie dough, people. Just like it. Tell me it does not. And it, best part, coming up. Because you know we're going to have to taste this. <laughs> but I'll let you do it at home. But it tastes amazing. It tastes so so, so good. Now, you are welcome to start eating it just like this if you'd like. But if you want to follow the official directions or do a little bit of both, which I like to do sometimes, mix it up, um, what you're going to do next is take your piece of parchment paper and you're going to dollop even amounts of your keto peanut butter chocolate chip cookie dough into eight little dollops. So eight balls. Bum, 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 bum. So that'll make like eight bites of cookie dough. Now, I showed you this earlier so you could see how big the bites are. They're about like this size. And what you do next is you just stick them in the freezer. I put them in the freezer for about 90 minutes. Now, waiting 90 minutes to get your cookie dough bites is painful, people. <laughs> it is painful. You're like, but I really want some. Okay, so if that's the case, feel free to put a few on, maybe half. Put half on your parchment paper, make four cookie dough bites, and then just go ahead and eat the rest yourself. There's no eggs in this recipe, so you don't have to worry that you're eating, you know, salmonella or anything scary. Because remember, all that's in here is peanut butter powder, sugar-free sweetener, some Faye yogurt. And that is why I recommend having the spatula for maximum deliciousness and scrapage. This is a thing. And don't feel bad if you want to eat it all just right then and there. But I do think it makes an extra cute dollop in the freezer. Fantastic, right? I was super hungry when I made these and created this little deliciousness. And what I ended up doing was eating half the recipe and then I was like, I'm satisfied and full. And then I put the rest in little balls and put them on the parchment paper in the freezer and I timed it and about 90 minutes later, it was absolute perfection. So that is the secret to making the best out of this world, keto-licious, low-carb, keto peanut butter cookie dough recipe. So tell me, does this sound doable to you? Does it sound doable? Is this something that you can do? Are you willing to try? You may be like, I don't know, it sounds a little unusual. But are you willing to try? I think that when we're willing to step outside of our comfort zone and maybe just try something new, you know, for years and years, a lot of us, you know, made cookies the old fashioned way. We made cake batter the old fashioned way. We used Duncan Hines and Pillsbury. And if you were like me, those cakes, those cookies never made it to the oven because I would just make the batter and eat the batter. Well, then I'd feel shameful, I'd feel embarrassed, then I'd start hiding the ingredients, the boxes, the eggshells, um, doing all the dishes really quick so nobody would see, because my family would come home and they'd wonder where the cookies were or where the cake was. And then I'd feel really shameful and embarrassed and that started a whole cycle of eating secretly and feeling bad about my choices. With this recipe, you don't have to feel that way, you can feel proud. You're like, all I'm having is some delicious yogurt, which is keto friendly and low carb and a few other normal ingredients that you probably have in your pantry already. And you can make this all the time. 
And as I mentioned, you know, some of the benefits of making dirty keto recipes like this is the portion control. You can eat it all at once or just a little bit. It tastes amazing. It can curb that sweet tooth and get you through a really, you know, stressful moment when you're like, oh, I can't do it. I can't do it. But then you get a recipe like this out and you're all like, totally, like, totally, I can do this right? It makes you feel empowered. It makes you feel confident. It makes you feel really good about yourself. And that is a huge part about being successful on Dirty Lazy Keto, is feeling like you're not missing out. Can I get an amen? Do you agree with me? Do you agree that being on Dirty Lazy Keto, this extra easy keto lifestyle, it's important to not feel like you're on a diet? Now, a lot of you might wonder, are there any more tricks like this, Stephanie? This is pretty good. I like this. Um, check out... I'm going to direct you to day six. That's a chapter, day six of Extra Easy Keto, specifically the section called Curb Keto Cravings, where I make cheat sheets and lists and help coach you through picking out the best low-carb, keto-friendly swaps, substitutes, tricks, suggestions to get through these moments where you feel like you're going to die if you don't eat every chip in the house or every dessert in the house or every cookie in the house, because I understand how that feels. So don't feel deprived. Don't get mad at yourself. Don't feel ashamed. Check out the list that I started here and then start making your own list. Don't be like, oh, I just have to look at Stephanie's list. You can start making your own list and put it on the fridge, put it on your phone if you want something more private and come up with these ideas for yourself that are sugar-free, low-carb, keto-friendly, diabetic-friendly. Start making recipes, keeping a little list of things that are affordable, right? Easy to make, fast, and can come together in a pinch. Because you don't want to have to be, you know, out shopping like, oh, I got to go buy all this stuff and it's so expensive. No, you can have those things, but it's also important to have some tricks up your sleeve for when you're at your house and you need something fast. So tell me your thoughts about that, you guys. Tell me your thoughts. Tell me your opinions. Did I hit the nail on the head? Are you going to be buying chocolate chip cookies like high carb sugary ones that are not so good for us because they make us feel bad about ourselves? Or are you going to be eating some sugar-free, diabetic-friendly, keto, low-carb fabulousness like we made today. Let me know if you feel more inspired. I can't hear you. <laughs> Come on, you guys. I am here to support you on your ketogenic journey. I'm here to help you every step of the way. I'm so proud of you for watching and listening, for coming back every week because I put on new video for you every week and new podcast, right? It's all here for you. These are resources to support you along your journey. So I'm really glad that you chose to, to come here and to spend a little time with me today. And I hope that you get involved in this community that I've created. And if you want to learn a little bit more about recipes like this, I mentioned the mug cake, which I'll link up, but I also will link up a video right after this called Chocolate Keto Brownies Easy Recipe. Yeah, that's also one of my favorites. Okay, so I think I've uh, piqued your interest a little bit, but I want to give you a huge round of applause for being here. I want to hear what you think, so please, please, please comment away, comment away. I can't hear you. Let's hear what you guys think. Let's hear what you think. I'm going to put on my glasses and start reading all of the comments. Oh, all the comments you wrote. Did you write a comment? Let me start reading. Let's see. Who wrote a comment? I'm reading. 